All right, what is going on everybody? How's everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another tier list video for the 2024 NFL season. Today, we are going to be ranking every single NFC team. A couple days ago, you guys saw our AFC tier list ranking for next season. Today, we're going to the other conference. What's going on, Tom? What's going on, Dom? What's up, guys? So we got your guys' favorite teams in this conference as well. Honestly, let's just start off with those two teams. Uh, Dom, Arizona Cardinals, right, where are we just, putting them? Let's just put them in S tier then. Let's start off with a good uh, good start. For both you predicting four, 14 wins, you think? Yeah. yeah. No. Um, I mean, I I feel like it's got to be like C. I don't, I don't want to say F because I think they're better than like a bottom feeder team. But I'm also like realistic and I know B is kind of too optimistic. Unless you guys want to go B, I'm not, I'm, I won't fight back. Uh, I think no. we'll, we'll go see. <laughs> yeah, I think see. Like, I think it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world if they ended up as the seventh or sixth seed. But like, you would bet on them to not make the playoffs as a whole compared to some of these other teams. But I feel like the middle of the pack in the <laughs> NFC is just so large. Like, there's so many like average teams. I feel like compared to each other. Yeah, and we saw it last year, especially like the AFC had more top end contenders. And towards the end of the season last year, the NFC was like nobody wanted the seventh seed. Whoever got it, we just felt like it was irrelevant. So I like mm -hmm. as of right now, it kind of seems like we're heading down that again. But obviously, as the season plays out, hopefully it doesn't go that way. Who was yeah. the seven last year? Was it the it was the Packers, yeah. right? Oh yeah, the Packers. I thought it was yeah, the, Packers, the Packers, but the Cowboys because the, the Cowboys won the division. Yeah. yeah, and then they wound up killing Dallas. They did, yeah. And then who was the six seed? The Rams six seed, yeah. Six right. seed was the Rams. Okay, gotcha. Um, so the Cardinals at C. Um. We'll go to the Giants, Tom. Do you think they're pretty much on even plane with the Cardinals, or do you think they're a tier above or a tier below next season? So I see like two or three teams that I'd probably put, eh, maybe two, <laughs> that I'd probably clearly put below the Giants and the Cardinals. Um, I don't know. I mean, the Cardinals won how many games last year, Dom? Five? Uh, four, but I mean, Josh Dobbs. Like, I, don't, I don't need to go into it too much. <laughs> four with Josh Dobbs. Well, I mean, Tommy DeVito. Uh, somehow he won two games. Um. I think I think the I don't think the Giants are like a pure bottom feeder team. I think they the defense has some talent. The offensive line should improve. Sign big signs like Allen Robinson could propel him into B. Even I wouldn't be mad. Um, but I think back of C is probably where we're where they probably sit here. They're not like a pure bottom feeder. I think their roster got better, right? You would say so, right? You would assume their receiving core is better. You would hope quarterback defense play overall yeah, can got, uh, yeah Brian Burns. Brian Burns. And, I mean, you'd have to think quarterback play has to be better overall, like, for the whole 17-game season. You would at least hope so with Daniel Jones yeah. fully healthy. Um, so I, I agree with them in C as well. Um, did you want to stand on that they're better than the Cardinals, or did you want to say they're behind no, the No, I can put the Cardinals ahead of them. Kyler's a much better quarterback than Daniel Jones, so I'll give him the oh. edge there. And I think Marvin Harrison, if you want to cancel the two of them out, I think you could probably make a case for um, them being about even. And I'll take the Cardinals because the better quarterback. While we're just talking about uh... – the quarterbacks right now did you happen to see i think it was the 33rd team that released their quarterback rankings for the upcoming season did you happen to uh see it yeah, I Jones did. Dead last. daniel jones uh, is the 32nd starting quarterback um, i think it's kind of crazy but uh, I, I i mean i agree with you just because like we're already throwing some rookies ahead of him like i think some rookies are better than him but to throw him ahead of some of the other rookies i don't know it was uh, a little interesting at least that's what i thought yeah i think i think anything above like if you could put him like anywhere like i think 20 like low 20s is where you can be like all right i'm not really like you know blinking twice at that but like if you like the back 20s you might be like eh, i don't know that kind of feel that kind of being disrespectful here and then you got 32 which i saw the listing there was i think every rookie well obviously that was drafted like jaden daniel should not be ahead of daniel jones like i don't care like it's just dale jaden daniels went to a worse team and he's a rookie i just just to i mean make the case my, for not 32 but my biggest takeaway was that bryce young was 31 like he was ahead of him i don't know how I yeah, how that and Bryce Young had like a historically terrible rookie season. I, listen, I'm fine with it. Maybe it maybe it'll make him get a chip on his shoulder if that's the narrative I want to start pushing. But I think he's probably a cemented bottom nine quarterback by the rest of the year. Yeah, um, where was Russell Wilson in this, or did they go? I guess like I guess they would. Nineteen or eighteen? He, he was higher than Kyler. Kyler was twenty-one. Yeah, and Russ was, and Russ was like, one yeah. stop ahead of him. I think. Like, I don't. I don't mind Russ like around twenty, but that's too low for Kyler. I feel like. Yeah, well, yeah, like, I mean, Kyler like should four, be there. Thirteen, fourteen. Like the list itself was kind of crazy. Like Brock Purdy was two, which I think they did that just to get a lot of two. Comments. Well, 
the, the replies to it were just ridiculous everywhere. Either Purdy was either too low or too high. It was. I think it was just engagement farming. But yeah, yeah, the I, list itself had was... a lot of problems. <laughs> Oh my god. Is this just for the 2024 season? That's what they made it for? Like entering, into next season, yeah. yeah, all the starting quarterbacks Two? going into next season. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, who do you think out of these three, or out of these two teams, who has the most rushing yards? Do you think it's Singletary? Do you think it's Connor? Do you think it's Kyler? Well, are you who gets saying, the most rushing oh, yards? Like you're picking a player or a team? In the yeah, Cardinals a player. Just, uh, a player. Get a running back? No? They did well, they draft drafted Trey one. Benson. Um, okay, Trey Benson. I mean, I still think if we're talking about one singular player because oh, i mean the cardinals you have to assume i would probably go singletary if we're going one guy because yeah, i'd lean that the way cardinals too. are a split backfield with an injury prone connor and a also running quarterback as well like i think he'll get yeah. a decent so amount of yards. i think i'd probably give singletary the edge there but if we're going team I, i'm going cardinals oh yeah because okay. the cardinals are probably not be losing by 30 in most games <laughs> All right, so for the uh, Atlanta Falcons had a very eventful offseason, signing uh, Kirk Cousins, Darnell Mooney. They drafted Michael Penix, who probably won't help them uh, too much in the 24 season, unless they throw him on kick returns. But I think this team overall, though, still has a good enough offense. I mean, they have still some defensive playmakers, still not a great defense, but got a defensive-minded head coach. I feel like they could be our first B-tier team. I don't think good enough for A, but I think better than the Cardinals and the Giants. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree that. And just just to clarify again, B tier is teams that could realistically make the playoffs, right? Like that's what we're using. Yeah. Yeah, I think their floor is basically like gonna be in the hunt all year, and then they could like reach their ceiling would be like a division crown, basically. Okay. But not. And then I think it's like a like your top like peak this year could be like your top percentile of your season is a Super Bowl, and then S is like it's Super Bowl or bust for your season, basically, like okay. the Chiefs yeah. that we had for the AFC. Um, all right, are we going to have our first F-tier team, Carolina Panthers? I mean, as much as I would root for them this year, this roster is not good after trading yeah, away it's, everybody. It's very easy to just put them in F-tier. Yeah, I mean, they were so bad last year. Ugh, it just sucks they didn't get the first overall pick. And then, I honestly, like, I don't even think they would be much better with Caleb Williams for the 24th season. Like, this team is so horrendous around whoever they were going to draft at number one and then move on from Bryce Young, and you're probably not even getting a good enough return for Bryce Young to build around this team because who would want him after say, last year? Hypothetically speaking, what do you think... What do you think he goes for? If you were to trade him, like, you know, obviously prob- that was probably never happening, but, like, you know, if you, if you think you're going to trade yeah. him, what would you I, get? I think well, he still would have been a first-round pick this year, I think. I, I don't think so. After that, I think it's – because well, I definitely had more pedigree than Josh Rosen did when he got traded. But I would say a Josh first – like, I think it was a third. It was a day yeah. two pick or maybe a f- – it, it, yeah, it wasn't high. Was there another, like, more recent case of this happening where Sam a quarterback Darwin got traded? A Jeez, I mean, maybe I don't he know if you maybe Denver, through, like, maybe Denver or Vegas would have traded their first because yeah, it was as, after his rookie year, so you have the rest of the rookie contract plus the fifth year option. Maybe Number yeah, maybe Vegas overall pick, so a late second for Josh Rosen. Yeah, like, do you think do you think Bryce Young or Michael Penix is gonna have a better career? I don't think it's crazy to say Bryce Young. So maybe Atlanta would have just traded eighth overall. Well, that's also crazy. That would be crazy. All right. that, would be crazy. That, that, that would that would actually be insane thinking about that. Um, but yeah, that, it would have been interesting to see if they would have moved on from Bryce Young. But I guess they would never have had Bryce Young if they had their pick this year because they gave obviously gave that up. So um, next up, we'll have the Chicago Bears. They're definitely the offseason winners. They have a talented roster. I think I like they were so respectable last year with the core that they had, and you think they got better this offseason. I think they're a B tier team. Definitely. I don't think A. I think we'd have to see it a little bit. Obviously, rookie quarterback, but you had in Keenan Allen, you had in some playmakers, Andre Swift, Roma Dunze. Like it's gonna be a fun offense. There's still gonna be defensive sure. issues, but do you guys think that they're better than the Falcons or behind the Falcons? I'd probably put them better than the Falcons because I think uh, I, I think, think their better. weapons are better than the Falcons for sure, yeah. right? I agree, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're talking about, like, one of the best, like, wide receiver trios in the NFL, so I think that's just going to yeah. help them significantly. And they, and you would think that Caleb Williams could very easily be an average quarterback this year, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked so. if he had a better year than Kirk Cousins, because Cousins come back from injury, and yeah. Caleb Williams is probably would, the more NFL-ready quarterbacks. With decent O-line play and Caleb Williams meeting expectations, they probably, they could probably win 9-10 games, I think, right? I mean, they did win. Yeah, they have a third place at their peak. Too. Yeah, no, it's gonna be an interesting they, division fight. I think they have a fourth place schedule because they came in. Yeah, the Vikings. oh yeah, the Vikings did come in. The Vikings did finish higher. No, the Vikings finished lower than them. Oh yes, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so oh, okay. it, they could definitely double digit wins and win the division uh, this year for sure. But I think it would be yeah. a little premature to put them as like an A tier team right now. Um, looking, hold on, 
I'm looking at their two. Uh, so the, they get they get the, the AFC South, which is a pretty decent division to match up. They do get the NFC West though. But their three division, their three uh, fourth place matchups are the Commanders, the Panthers, and the Titans. Yeah, it's really good. And maybe and the Patriots too, and the Patriots. Okay, no Commanders, Patriots, and Panthers. It doesn't. I, I. That's the one, two, and three teams. Like you cannot get better than that. Yeah, it's pretty. good. Yeah, and if you and you you stack them up against the AFC South and the NFC West, I would say that they're probably like if you put the Bears in those two divisions, they're probably the second best team in either division. Like you'd still take the Niners over them, but I wouldn't be shocked if the Bears are better than the Seahawks, Rams, or Cardinals next year. And then for the AFC South, like probably the Texans are better on paper, but Jacksonville, Colts, Titans, yeah, not surprised either. So they could, I mean, they could win twelve games next year at their absolute peak. Yeah, you just mentioned the Texans, like the Bears. 2024 season could be the Texans 2023 season. Like I think it. I think there's perfect parallels there. For sure, definitely. I think Caleb might even be in a better spot than Shroud was. Oh, for sure. Um, so the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, when we're comparing them to the rest of the NFL, they're not an S tier team. But in A or an NFC specific, are they an S tier team? So. I think like they, they got better this offseason. They they got Barkley. They got two corners, which they needed in the draft. They got um, Bryce Huff. They draft. didn't. They moved on from Hassan Reddick. But like I don't know. They extended a bunch of their guys too. Kept everyone happy. It's a good team. It's just like I don't know how many teams we're gonna put in S tier. I feel like because like in the AFC, the Chiefs are obviously the overall S tier team. But I don't think anyone separated themselves from the pack unless we still think it's a clear like San Francisco in their own tier, and that's it. The thing is, if we put the Eagles in S tier, I think that means S tier would be at least three teams. The way I would I'm even say four because I'm the, still putting another team in front like of the them. way I'm the way I'm looking at it. So that's my yeah. one that's my one hesitation with them in S tier. Um, Do you think also, it's like, overdoing it if we had three tier three teams in S tier? I think that I think if we put them, we'd have to put four. I think I think they're the fourth team that I would put in. They didn't win a playoff game last year. Yeah, like I think I think it would be iffy if we put them too high. But the thing is, like, yes, last year they didn't win a playoff game. But if their mindset going into this season is Super Bowl or bust, I feel like that is their mindset, which would justify an S tier. You know, like that's the one, the one tricky part because yeah, they underperformed last year, but everyone's kind of expecting them to bounce back. Like I'm pretty sure they're a top. Um, top like seven Super Bowl favorite for next season. I don't know the exact odds, but I think that's where they fall right now. Yeah. So, um, so I think we're going to have the four teams. I think we can make the tough decision. We're going to put two in S, two in A. Do we think Eagles deserve to be in that A? Or that S? I think, I think they could be the first team in A, I think. So you think... I would, I would so, okay, in, okay. Well, let's just put San Francisco in S tier, right? Like we're, yeah. They're one of our S tier teams. We have to. They've lost okay, the Super so Bowl, but they still kept most right of their now. core. Yeah, so I'm going to put San Francisco in S tier, and then we'll, we'll just kind of go through this now. I assume the other two teams we're going to talk about are Dallas and Detroit. Yeah. Now, yeah, I think we could throw all three of those in A, but we're going to move one up to S. Between those three, who do you guys think deserves the most of the S tier? Do you think it's Dallas? Detroit. Do you think it's Detroit? I, I would agree. Why, like, how could it not be Detroit? I mean, Go- like, Goff, you can make an argument Goff is just as good as Dak, the way he's playing. Their run game is probably, their run game in Detroit is better than it is in Dallas. Their receiving core is, I don't know. I mean, CeeDee Lamb's definitely better than Amon Ross St. Brown, but, like, not by much. Is he? And then, Amon, Amon Ross the highest paid receiver now. That clearly means, like... Oh, uh, yeah. And then, and I would say Laporta, like, offsets, um, like, any, like maybe the difference between them because he's way better than Jake Ferguson. So, I mean, Detroit's offense and their offensive line is great. Like, and they won, they won two playoff games last year. Like, Dallas got smoked in the first round at home. Like, we cannot... I think Detroit has to be in front of Dallas. I'm I'm cool with that, but I think I'm gonna I think Dallas should not be in S tier because like you said, they have not proved anything in the playoffs. My vote would go to the Eagles in S tier, but I just I, I guess it's nice for Detroit. They didn't lose either one of their coordinators as well. I'm just gonna like I think the Eagles have a good enough roster and they hit their weak parts of the offseason, but they did lose Kelsey and Cox their retirement. Like that's that's pretty huge for them. Dom, what do you think? I guess you'll be the tiebreaker here because Tom's going Detroit, I'm going Philly. Unless you go Dallas, then we're going to have an issue. No, 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 no. I, I do think Detroit's <laughs> probably the second best team in the NFC. Okay. Um, but the, do I think the Eagles are closer to the Niners and the Lions, or do I think they are closer to Dallas and the rest of the teams we then put in A tier? That's where I think the question comes into play. 
I, I don't think we're going to have any more teams in A tier, right? We're just going to have Detroit and Dallas. Bro, I'm looking at this Detroit death chart, man. Like, they just seem to get, they got way better. Like, they got, like, their corners were weak, and then they had, like, they replaced Jeff Okuda with Terry on Arnold. Maybe they were removed from Okuda. But still, Brian Branch has had a fantastic rookie season. Um, Carlton Davis is a decent cornerback, too. No, it's a good team. I mean, they were in the NFC Championship game, and they should have been in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I just, and I don't this, know. This offensive line, too, is nuts. I also think the NFC got better, and, like, I, it was a nice win over L.A., and L.A. was a respectable team last year, but I don't think anybody thought they were going to be a Super Bowl contender. And Tampa, like, it's an impressive win. I'm not going to, like, downgrade that. I'm like, they beat who they got in the schedule. I just wonder if, like, Detroit and Philly played in the, like, NFC cha- or NFC Divisional round, like, I don't know. Uh, like on yeah, just like a one is, game. Tampa just destroyed Philly the weekend before that. Like I think I know, I know. Ones. I know. Philly had their issues, and I, I I think they got better. I mean, they got a new co- they got new coordinators. Uh, who's their offensive coordinator now? Is it Kellen Moore? Yes. 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 I, forgot, I, kind of forgot I mean, it's that. better than yeah, it's better than Brian Johnson. Um, but Dom, you're going Detroit, so we're gonna put Detroit in S tier. They won two playoff games. You gotta put Detroit, in my opinion. Philly was a wild card. And I just but this is. I, I, know, I just I think they're the better team, like going into next year. Like I'm not, like not even looking at last year for this part. I think as of right now, I think Detroit's still better than Philly. Like Philly last year, like we keep saying, Philly didn't win a playoff game last year. They were the five seed last year. I still think they're the third best team going into this season. So like I'm discounting, I'm ignoring what happened last year to make my prediction for the Eagles for next year. It's just I think they're still third. Okay. All right, so we'll we'll do Philly in A tier, Cowboys in A tier. We got the Niners in S tier with Detroit. Now, before I go to like any of these other teams, Dom, did you have another team you wanted to nominate possibly for A tier? Um, I I mean, just looking at it, I feel like could the Packers sneak into the back end of A tier? Is that kind of crazy to think? I mean, Jordan Love. I, mean, I think they got better. Yeah, their uh, money game, I think, did improve going from Jones to Jacobs. I mean, it's probably a minimal improvement, but it's still an improvement. Their receivers were all young last year, so hopefully this like full offseason they can get better. Um, and they fixed the, – I mean, they tried to fix their O-line in the draft a little bit by getting uh, Morgan. And they they signed um, McKinney in the offseason to try to shore up the secondary. Like I feel like the Packers did improve, and I think they might be closer – I think the Packers are closer – to the Eagles and the Cowboys than they are to the Bears and the Falcons. Yeah. That's the and only, they did play well against the, the Niners team. in the divisional round, too. Yeah, like the Packers yeah, are the only team the left that I think that they could sneak into it. Now, I, hmm. are we overrating Dallas? Do we think Dallas should be an A tier? I mean, I still think Dallas is good. I don't. I, I think Dallas were discounting because how, like, like Dallas is still going to win 10 11 games probably this year. I don't think that's they won't, crazy. Yeah. Dak, I still think Dak they're a good team. Here. They want a lot of guys walk in the offseason though. Right. That's a good point, Matt, because say so say that I think the Eagles could certainly take this to, they they were what a game out last year and they got better. Did Dallas get better? Like no, or they, just, they may have like they just Dallas stayed but like they might have gotten but worse, staying honestly. for Dallas, I feel like has to be worse because they didn't win a playoff game. They didn't do anything to change it. Like, how was their draft? Did they they, they, they drafted Tyler Guyton. They lost Tyron Smith to the Jets. Um, okay. They lost obviously Tony Pollard. No, I mean, they brought like, back yeah. Zeke. I mean, like Diggs was out the whole year too, so they're going to get Diggs back. I guess you're I mean, right. If you look at their schedule last year, like if it's a bad team, they they killed the bad teams. They did struggle against the good teams, but if we're just doing like a power ranking system, all the teams below them, they, they're going to beat. All the teams above them, they're going to lose to. Like, it's like, just where do they fall into the tier, you know? Mm-hmm. The only thing I would think of is we drop, we put the Packers in B, drop Dallas to B, drop Detroit to A, and leave San Francisco solo S tier. But I'm also okay... So we would drop Dallas to, to B tier. We'd also put the Packers in B tier. And then we'd drop Detroit to A tier. I think I'd be okay with that. So we'd keep San Francisco like still the best team in the NFC. And if if Philly or Detroit ended up with the like the number one seed this year, it wouldn't be the like the craziest thing in the world. I think 
would we be shocked if Dallas was the best team in the NFC? I guess maybe not, but I think there's a better chance that it happens to be Philly. Okay, so we're dropping down Dallas, Green Bay, and then Detroit and Philly go to A, and San Francisco is the lone ass. Yeah. I think, that's but then probably, I guess we could, I think that's probably better. But then we could also, like, we're going to map out the end of this tier list. Like, if we throw Seattle and Tampa and LA in a B tier and we think it's a little too crowded, like, we can move some teams back up and down. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. All right, so. All right, so, like, uh, all right, we'll do it at that. We have San Francisco and S. Philly and Detroit in A, uh, Dallas, Green Bay, Chicago, and Atlanta in B, Giants and Cardinals in C, Carolina in F. Um, next up, we got Minnesota. They drafted J.J. McCarthy. They still have a very good offense. Tom, where do you think they should be? I feel like McCarthy can come in and like he's in a good spot to just succeed right away. But like this defense, though, like, or do you think they'll... I think... It's tough I think, because they did lose Daniel Hunter, but they brought in Dallas Turner and um, Jonathan Grenard, right? Grenard, yeah, that's that's who else. So like they kind of they kind of replaced. They Daniel are starting Hunter, Jerry Tillery at tackle though. Yeah, there's gonna be some O line issues, but it's still I think a good team. I think I think they're either beginning of C or back end of B. It's just really how is how is. JJ going to play this year if he does play. I think back end of B is probably a little cause, because we're feeling Jordan Addison was nasty last year, especially he stepped up as a wide receiver one two. Like I think it'd be, I think seeing this offense in full um, in full stride now, and I think Aaron Jones is significantly better than Alexander Madison. Without a doubt, yep. So I think I think you could put him like do we even put them above the Falcons? Like what are the Falcons do better? Do, what are the Falcons do better than the Vikings? Just quarterback. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying, but we but, but, but we're saying it's better. We also don't know McCarthy can come in and be a, and be a, a, a play even to Kirk. Like what's Kirk? Maybe the thirteenth best no, quarterback in the NFL. McCarthy can't Kirk, come in Kirk and play. Cousins like Cousins is top ten. We're not having this debate right now. Yeah. he was top ten. Is he anymore? If if the Vikings this season finish with a better record than the Atlanta Falcons, what does that do to Kirk Cousins' resume? Does that just make like that makes his past ten years just completely irrelevant? Right? I don't think he has like a great resume yeah, to begin it's with. It's not like we're talking about Drew Brees' career being relevant. It's Kirk Cousins, bro. Like, 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 like if if he winds up kind of getting you know pushed off to the side a little bit, and yeah, who cares? It's Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Like it's not like it's like a Hall of Famer that we're like discounting now. Like, you know. You realize that Kirk Cousins, like, he has a borderline shot of like potentially being top. Mm, I won't say top 10, but top 15 all-time in passing yards. Like, he's he's had that long and that good of a career. But he, I, I don't know. He hasn't he, won does anything. He any, does he have any Pro Bowls or All Pros or, or anything to back? Pro Bowls, well, pro bowls are don't matter, most, but All yeah, Pros he definitely matter. doesn't have. No, but only um, only two guys have All Pros every year. Bit. Fans only get a third of the vote. All right, but when Snoop Huntley's making the Pro Bowl, I throw it out the window. I could care less. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't think, I don't think, like, Kirk was... Like, he's been a top 10 quarterback before, but I think Kirk when Cousins, we map it out... He's thrown 30... Like, his touchdown-interception ratio every year has been insane. Last year, he played eight games. He had 18 touchdowns in eight games. Okay, he's he's a good, like, like facilitator throughout the regular season, but I'm also, like, looking at him as a whole. He hasn't done anything in the playoffs. They lost to the Giants. This dude is kind of like the king of the checkdowns when it matters the most. He can sling all he wants. He can be Blake Bortles throughout the regular season all he wants. But I'm just saying, I, I think he's 10 to 15. I don't think he's top 10. With Stroud That's in the mix and Caleb in the mix. And you got I these think, younger guys coming in. I think after what we what we know about J.J. McCarthy at this current moment, I think it's premature to just say the Vikings are better than the Falcons right now. Okay, I think, so they put them on the Falcons then. I think Kirk Cousins can cover flaws of the Falcons that J.J. McCarthy cannot cover of the Vikings. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's fair to say for sure. All right, um, so, so I'm fine with putting... I'm fine with putting the Vikings behind the Falcons. I would also not be surprised though, if the Vikings just fall into C tier. Because if for whatever reason, let's say J.J. McCarthy's not ready, if your quarterback is not ready to play, it doesn't matter who's on the field with them. Like, it's as simple as that. I mean, it was last year, right? With Kirk fully healthy, they were, what, 0-4 to start the season? Yeah, and, do we think, and do we think J.J.'s getting them out of an 0-4 start? Hell no. I mean, the Vikings Well, I guess that could be Darnold, and then they maybe go to J.J. if they're 0-4. I mean, the Vikings, the Vikings did get the 4-4, four and four, but... No, they did, because I think of Kirk Cousins, too, at the end of the day. I don't think J.J. right away is going to be as good as Kirk was in the first eight games of last year. 
Um, it's also tough right, because so, the, that division's really, really, really. It is. Um, it may actually have a case for best division. Probably that, and I guess both Norths next year should be the best divisions in football. Um, Seattle, I think. Whew, Seattle is just kind of like the definition of like average or mid, you could say. Um, I think Seattle should be C tier. I think. I think the really. Vikings are better. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the Vikings over the Seahawks next year. I think. I don't know if I. Uh, I don't think I would, but I think they're. I think they're in the same tier of teams. I don't think I want to put Minnesota whole tier above Seattle with the the big question mark at quarterback. And Seattle does have a solid defense to an for extent, what? and they drafted Byron Murphy. I was gonna say for they still have good worse, weapons. Seattle's point differential, if we wanted to factor that in at all, was the sixth worst in the NFC. If that factors into it. Um, I don't know. Does it? I don't think it does for me. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think I'm gonna value that I think so it makes much. A difference for me. Um, I think that discounts them a little bit. Six worse in the NFC. Yeah, and the Cardinals are getting the Cardinals are getting better. The Niners are still the Niners, and um, the Rams in theory should be better because Stafford was hurt, Cup was hurt, everybody was hurt on the Rams last year. So everyone in the division, the Niners are still the Niners, and then the other two teams got better. So I think I don't know, know if the Rams got better. better. I don't think the Rams got like I would. I don't. I don't. I actually think the Seahawks will be better than the Rams next year. We're we're gonna find out next year how valuable Aaron Donald truly was because we will yeah. see what happens with that defense. Like losing yeah, him is yeah. massive, and I guess like they're still gonna have a high powered offense, and like actually that offense is gonna be really good. They spent a lot of money on their like interior O line, and then um, who did the Rams get with their first round pick? Was it um, it was the was it the edge? Was it um? I'm blanking on it. Jared, it wasn't Watu, right? No, they took Jared Verse. They took Jared Verse. Because then they took um, uh, Braden Fisk in the second round. They took both yeah. Florida State D linemen. Um, yeah, maybe the Rams will be better than Seattle. Okay, so you want to put Seattle beginning as C right ahead of Arizona? Yeah, and I'm fine with putting the Rams above Seattle and C. Or the more I think about it, I think the more the Vikings can do that. I'm going to say. Okay. Because I can see the Vikings. The, no, you know what? I think the Rams, the Rams are maybe better than the Vikings, dude. Stafford's think really they good. Are. I, I, I agree. If, if they play tomorrow, I would have the Rams winning. So do we put the Rams with Atlanta? Uh, you, yes. I think we I, do. I, I think, I think so. While we're here, I also think Seattle's better than Minnesota. I think we're overrating Minnesota a little bit. All right, so let's drop Minnesota okay, so to see. I'll flip Seattle. Because I feel like now, now we're getting to the point where B tier now is like, the, is gonna be the, I, I think the Bucks. they're somewhere where they're probably going to go into B tier. Like, can a B tier be this big? Yeah, it was maybe pretty big. For, it was actually out, like you said. B B tier was really big for our AFC video. Um. Well, okay, okay. So I think the three remaining teams we have right now, let's just say Washington. I think joins Carolina in F tier. Or do you think they're behind Giants in C tier? I'm gonna be honest. I think Washington. Washington. I'm fine putting Washington in F tier. The Giants swept them last year. I I don't care about that one head to head matchup. Like Washington added every position of possible need and should have improved i do think washington will finish at least third in the division dude i don't so know you think they'll washington be better than the giants so many guys but like it was just like adding mid on mid on mid like no they're like well, how many difference makers did washington add this this offseason like an entire defense they got an entire new defense with a defensive minded head coach i feel like they're just gonna cook but like they didn't, I, I do think their defense will be good, but they barely dressed offensive line which was one of the worst in all football last year and jane and daniels, jane I, daniels I, I don't know if he'd be good, you man. Want, I just don't. Did you, want Jay, did you want him on the Giants like two weeks ago? <laughs> no. I want Drake May. I want Jay Daniels until like the combine, and then I think I was fully set on Drake May, and like I was like fine. If if not Drake May, then, then give me neighbors. And then I had like some little like little spot where I was like, okay, I think that the Giants could get Marvin Harrison, but that was never happening. They did, they did get uh, Johnny Newton though, which I do like. Ah, uh, I mean. I mean, I, it sounds like I'm in the minority, so I guess we'll do what you guys want with Washington. But I, just m my personal thought is that I think they will probably finish ahead of the Giants this year. My my Dorrance, thought here is... Dorrance, Armstrong, Darren Payne, okay. Jonathan Allen, Johnny Newton, great. Cleveland, their, Farrell. I, their front like, seven should be good. Their front seven should be good. Their secondary isn't going to be good. Their O-line's not going to be good. They also don't have really many uh, uh, offensive weapons. Like, Terry's obviously consistent, but, like, Jahan Dotson is... I know, but like, has he shown that he's a first round pick? I don't know. Um, I think Carolina, worst team in the NFC. I do think Washington is in that Carolina tier because I think there's a chance 
that Washington does finish with the worst record in the NFC and we wouldn't be surprised. I do think if there's a third team that is like should be at the NFC, it's the Giants because this season can go to like shit for the Giants and Daniel Jones can be just as bad and this offense does not improve at all and they could be the worst team. But I don't think Washington is good enough to be in C. So I think it's like fine with Giants in C, N to C, Washington beginning of F. If you guys think Carolina are in their own tier of dog shit in the NFC, then we could move Washington behind the Giants. But I think the Giants have like a respectable enough team that I think they'll be better than Washington if everything goes to like plan. But obviously injuries can change that. I mean, injury should have changed the life. Like, who's, who do you think's better? Okay, so who do you think's better next year? Daniel Jones or Jaden Daniels? Daniel Jones. I, 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 I'm, I'm not taking Jaden Daniels over anybody until I see him be a decent and the, star. And the Giants' offensive line should be better than Washington's offensive line. Running back, I mean, if Austin Eckhart is the day one starter, which they shouldn't he's do, not, but if he is, Robinson, all right, good, all right, all right. So, like, Robinson will probably be better than Singletary, but I don't think they're going to be far apart. And then you no. look at the offensive weapons, like, Giants probably have a, a better overall receiving core, even though Terry should be better than Neighbors just specifically for next year. But I think Neighbors is going to be good enough right away, where I think this core for the Giants is better than Washington's. What's, what's the deal with Darren Waller? Is he retired yet? Like, what's going on with that? I think he's probably going to retire. Because That's crazy. Do the Giants they, because the Giants drafted the tight end, so they're probably gonna, so I would imagine ball is retiring. And I actually like Theo Johnson. That is wild. Um, all right, so I'm cool doing Washington beginning of F or behind Giants and C. I think Washington should be F. Okay. I'll I'll concede for F for now. I'll have okay. to fight more as the season gets closer. <laughs> I'll talk to you week seven. <laughs> I feel like based off them winning a playoff game last year, they brought back Baker Mayfield. This defense should still be good. They re-signed Mike Evans. Like, they still have good enough players, I think, to be respectable in the NFC. I think the Bucks are B tier. I think I think they're behind the Rams and the Bears, though. I don't know if that's a hot take. I think it's debatable if they're ahead of the Falcons, which I think they should be because that defense is still really good. And they were and I don't think Baker is really far off from Kirk Cousins, especially if Kirk Cousins coming off this injury, playing in a whole new system. But the Bucks did well, lose their offensive coordinator, so. And they still have Todd Bowles. Still have Todd Bowles. I think they're definitely ahead of the Vikings. Do you think they... St- I think they're better than Seattle and C as well. I dropped the Vikings to C also. I'm fine with that, yeah. Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's debatable between them and the Falcons, unless you guys think they should be ahead of the Rams and stuff, and then that's a different debate. No, I, cause I, I, think, I think I would take the Rams as of... Yeah, because the Rams are significantly better coach too. I think the Rams at full strength. Because the Bucks, the Bucks did get pretty fortunate. I think they were they were pretty pretty fortunate with injuries last year, right? Like they their team was pretty much healthy the entire year. Like they didn't lose anybody crazy. I think Mike Evans got suspended, or did Evans get hurt? Um, no, I mean he was um, available. I don't think he got suspended a game, did he? Yeah. And yes. I mean, uh, Rashad Rashad White had a great yardage season, like. His his averages were disgusting, but yardage wise, he was pretty good. And they also did not address running back in the draft. But as a Rashad White fantasy manager, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think I, I'm fine putting them in B tier ahead of Atlanta. I'm fine with that too. Spec- this is the one time I'm going to use like past results. The Bucks have somehow won this division three straight years, so I'm fine with putting them as the best. Well, I mean, we haven't done the Saints yet, but I'm fine with putting the Bucks as of right now the best team in the division. That's fair. That so division is still cool kind of it's kind of wide open, but it's probably going to lean more to a two team race between the Falcons and the Bucks. Uh, final team, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, they're I with Derek Carr at this quarterback, with Dennis Allen as the head coach. No way should they be in B tier in my opinion. Um, for a team that could low key be a surprising worst team in the NFC, the Saints would be like a juicy like futures bet. But I think they'd probably be somewhere in C between like Minnesota and Arizona. I put them between Arizona and the Giants. Do you think Arizona is better than them? Yes. They really saved their season down the stretch. I mean, if you start like looking at the middle of the season last year, they beat the Bears when the Bears had um, Tyson uh, Badgett starting. They blew out the Panthers. They beat the Giants. I don't even know who the quarterback was that week for the Giants. Um, and then they plowed the Falcons the last week of the season. Like They kind of got on a nice run to make their record look better. I don't think this was a 9-8 and team last year. I don't think so either. And their big free agency acquisition was Chase Young. And they lost Winston, right? Yes, Winston went to the Browns. Yeah, so like, I who knows what this team's going to be if Derek Carr inevitably gets hurt because his offensive Ooh. line wasn't good at times. How, uh, but they do have Spencer how, Rattler. I was going to say, how soon do we get uh, the Spencer Rattler calls? Because that would just be... 
I would feel bad for Saints fans. If you have Derek Carr and you're pushing for a Spencer Rattler, that's just a lose-lose situation. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm I, looking at their weapons, too. Like, Chris Olave, Rashid Shaheed, A.T. Perry, Cedric Wilson, Jawan Johnson. Like, Kamara's still there, yeah, but... Like, in terms of guys like Taysom Hill is still like going to be another a quarterback throwing a bad guys besides Olave. And Taysom Hill's Hill is going to be another bad. vocal point. I'd be fine putting them in between Seattle and Arizona for now. Okay, okay. that's only one spot different than what I had, and so I guess I will, I will, uh, I'll accept that. Just because, right. like, I think like, maybe they bottom out, but I don't want to put them that low uh, this quickly. That's fair. Um, I, th- I I think I agree. Just we'll see because if Derek Carr maybe maybe just a full year with this team like under his belt, maybe he has to be better next year. Um, yeah. All right. So that's the, good. And you mentioned the weapons. Like that's I think that's the main piece. Yeah, and we'll see how um Kamara does if he's gonna like start regressing because that that could be a thing for him this year. Um, so that's gonna wrap up our NFC tier list. Uh, we had the Niners in S tier solo. Uh, then we had the Eagles and the Lions in A tier. We had the Cowboys, Packers, Bears, Rams, Bucks, and Falcons in B tier. Vikings, Seahawks, Saints, Cardinals, and Giants in C tier. And the Commanders and the Panthers in F tier. Let us know if you guys um, enjoyed by dropping a thumbs up on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Let us know in the comments what you guys think of this tier list. And then if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, we'd appreciate a rating and review over there as well. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.